Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. We are continuing our journey through the, the Christmas account. We're in Luke here today. We're just kind of marching through it. And uh, we have the account of the birth of John the Baptist being foretold. So uh, the birth of Jesus is preceded just by a few months by John the Baptist. And uh, why is this so important? What's taking place here? Well, today we're going to read the account, what's happening. And then tomorrow we're going to read why it's happening. So let me just uh, kind of start here in, in Luke chapter 1. So Zach, uh, Zechariah is John the Baptist's father. He was a priest. So he was from the, the priestly order. And a little insight here to how that works. So uh, he did not stay in Jerusalem at the temple all the time. Uh, the priests, the Levites, uh, were in different cities, kind of spread throughout uh, Judah and uh, in, in Israel before uh, that the, those tribes were, were lost. And um, they would come to the temple for a week every year and do their priestly duties, and they'd go back to their the, their homeland. So Zechariah was was on duty that, that that week. So he was in Jerusalem. He was at the temple, the temple that, that Herod had rebuilt, this grand, amazing structure, just uh ancient it wasn't technically an ancient wonder of the world but like at that level and uh he was drawn by lots to go in and offer incense inside the 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 temple part of it so this is a very very special thing something that zachariah probably once in his lifetime would get to do he only went there one week a year and during that time chances were that he wasn't going to get to do that so this was a very very special moment for him and it says this in verse 11 it says well zachariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him, as you can imagine, right? I mean, just remember this. Every time that someone sees an angel, uh, there is fear involved. It's never just like, oh, like, because angels aren't, aren't the little, you know, cherub, uh, Valentine's Day, cute little baby things that they are they are messengers from God. They're coming through the, the throne room of God. Uh, they are uh, terrifying to us creatures. I mean, not terrifying because they're, they're trying to hurt us, but just uh, not what you would expect. And of course, Zechariah was not expecting that when he went in. So he's, he's scared. It says, Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will be turned many Israelites to the Lord their God. And he will be man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of God. This is an amazing announcement. So he gives him some very specific instructions, that you're to name him John, and that he's to, to live under uh, that specific thing about not drinking alcohol. That he's going to live under the Nazarite vow his, his entire life, uh, that, which is very strict on what you can eat and touch, and you're, you're set apart holy for God's work. That's really what it involves there. That's the, the big connotation. So John is going to be set apart, separate, holy for God's work. He's going to be a prophet like Elijah. Many people are going to be rejoice in what the message that he has to bring. And he's going to bring, uh, and he's going, his main mission is going to be prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. Prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. So There's a lot of information that he's throwing at Zechariah. But, but what does is, what is Zechariah focus on? Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. My wife is well along in years. He's like, hey, this is a good... I'm just wondering, once he said he ha he's going to have a son, was Zechariah listening to anything? Uh, was he listening that he was the Nazarite vow, that he was going to be a prophet? He was the one preparing the way for the Lord, one like Elijah. He just got hung up on the, hey, we're both really old. Like, we're past childbearing years. How is this going to happen? Well... It says, the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God, and he sent me to bring you this news. He's letting him know, this, I'm not just making this up. God gave this message for me to give to you. He says, but now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. 
Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. All right. So here, the announcement of John the Baptist. His, Zechariah does not believe, so he's, he's silent. He's not able to explain all these amazing things that he's seen. He just has to wait it out. Uh, wait it out until, until God gives him his voice back. He eventually does. After John is born, he's able to speak. He's able to tell people everything that, that took place there. I would imagine that you know he did some games of charades trying to explain this what took place inside the, the, the temple there, but fully be able to explain it once John the Baptist was born. And what's important to know here is that John the Baptist is the, the forerunner of, of Jesus Christ. And that God's plan of redemption is so important. He's not just dropping in out of nowhere. There's going to be someone that's going to prepare the way for him, to, to make his way known, to prepare the way for the Lord. And that is going to be John the Baptist. And even that is a supernatural birth. Not like Jesus, uh, but out of that, God is doing something new, something special. And the fact that their olden age is showing that, that God is doing something out of the ordinary. This is a special child. This is a set-apart child. He has a plan and a purpose and a mission. From before he was even conceived, God had a plan for him. And even before he was born, even before his, his mom gave birth, uh, this child was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb, this, this precious child. From, from before the moment of conception all the way through his life, God had a plan and a purpose for him to prepare the way for Jesus. Talk about a singular mission, right? How great would it to know, be to know exactly what your purpose on earth is for? Like just be able to dial it down into one sentence. This is what you're created to do. Do this one thing. If you do this one thing, you'll be successful. John was, was given that to prepare the way for Jesus. And this is now unfolding, getting ready for the arrival of Jesus himself. But tomorrow, we're actually going to go back in time. We're going to go back and read the prophecy that predicts John the Baptist arriving. Until then, though, let's go ahead and pause there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for just another day. Another day to, to get up, to, uh, to spend some time with you, to learn more about your, your plan of redemption, God. And God, as we look at the, the life of John the Baptist, and, and we, we see the singular mission that you gave him. God, we, we just want to know what you want us to do today. We don't need to know 20 steps. We don't need to know months and years in advance. But God, would you guide us today? Help us to have the conversations you want us to have. Help us to have the, the interactions you want us to have. Help us to, to be generous when you want us to. Help us to just do exactly what you would have us to do today. We want to honor you. We love you. We want to live in response to that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.